Dividend investing. This is the place to be on YouTube if you are interested in investing for dividend checks, for passive income, for cash flow that can be used to pay your bills. I am celebrating 25,000 subscribers here on PPCE and this is dividend investing for everyone. So I'm going to answer five more subscriber questions today. Let's get started. All right, so subscriber question number one comes down to 3M. In terms of full disclosure, I am long 3M, ticker symbol MMM. And the subscribers are asking, hey, Ian, are you buying 3M yet? The stock has been plummeting and, uh, well, I wouldn't say quite plummeting, but it's certainly falling. It's falling on this whole trade wars and tariffs news. And it's all also just falling based on their most recent earnings report. Anyways, yes, I am buying 3M just within the last two weeks, I have purchased 3M twice. In fact, I purchased 3M, shares of 3M, today. And so I want to share that with you really quickly. I have my computer here. In terms of full disclosure, I am long Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. Anyways, um, I bought 3M today. I paid $173.45. I'm really happy about this. It may go lower from here, but I am really happy with this purchase price. I think it's a great purchase price. Now, if you are following me on Twitter, I'll link in the description below. You would already know this information because I am sharing my trades on Twitter. So make sure to tune into my Twitter if you'd like to see my trades in real time. Now, I also purchased 3M about a week ago as well. I purchased it a little bit higher. I think I, I didn't write it down. Oh, here it is, $179.10. So really happy with both of these purchase prices. Anyways, based on today's purchase price, if I take the dividend, the quarterly dividend of 3M of $1.44, I multiply by four, and then I divide by the current share price. My starting yield for 3M right now on this new tranche is 3.3%. This is about as good of a starting yield as I have ever seen seen on 3M. And so I'm really excited about buying 3M here. I will continue to average in over time and I hope the share price goes down more. Now in terms of a PE ratio, if I go to Yahoo Finance and I look at the consensus estimate from the analysts, the 2019 consensus estimate for 3M is $9.52. So if I take the current share price at 173 and change, I divide by the consensus estimate of 952. I get a current uh, two or a forward PE for 2019 from analysts of about 18. So right now buying 3M at a 3.3% starting yield at a forward PE of 18. I wouldn't say it's bargain basement territory yet. I think bargain basement would be a PE down in the 16 range, but certainly I'm ready to go for it. I'm ready to add shares to my 3M position. One of my core focuses this year in 2019 is building up my top, my core, my top 10 favorite stocks. And 3M happens to be my number 10 favorite dividend stock of all time. And so I'm excited to add more shares. Now, if you have not seen my portfolio yet, I'll link in the description below. You can download my entire dividend stock portfolio and you'll see right there that uh, 3M is my number 10 favorite dividend stock of all time. So that is question number one. Now, again, I will, I'm not backing up the truck yet or anything. I will back up the truck and add a lot of 3M if it gets down to a PE of 16, which it might, which leads me to question two. So question number two, I love this one. This was a question that came through today on Twitter, and I wanted to answer it because I think this is a really good question, very timely. And he says, can I ask, if you think there's more downside to the price, why did you buy now? So this person is asking Ian, why did you buy now 3M if you think there's more downside? And I do believe there could be more downside. There are a few reasons for this. Reason number one is market reversals. They can happen really quick. So when something is going down, it can go back up really fast in the blink of an eye. And so what I've always found is it's best if I see something I want to buy just to average down, start averaging in, because before I know it, the price could be back up and I would have missed my opportunity. And so that's one reason. Another reason is quite frankly, I just cannot time the market that well. I believe what we're seeing here is the beginning of a um, market correction. I think there's going to be a pretty big correction on the horizon. That being said, I don't know when the correction is coming. It could take a while. And quite frankly, I don't know how quickly the reversal will happen. I can't pick the bottom. I don't know what's gonna happen. So all I do know is this is what 3M is trading at now. 
I like what it's trading at, and I'm willing to buy shares. And so rather than try to time the day-to-day -day of the market, what I've always found works well is to use a macro level picture. So macro level, I think it's going down. And then I look at my portfolio. I own 40 stocks within the portfolio on a micro level. Which one is trading at the most attractive valuation and which one falls with my strategic themes for the year? It happens to be 3M. And then I start looking, is it at an attractive price? Yes. I'll go for it and I'll just average in. I'll buy small chunks of stock over time and I'll dollar cost average. And I've always found that that strategy works really well for me just because I can't time the, the bottom precisely and I don't wanna miss the bottom. I don't think this is the bottom by the way, but again, I just don't know. So I like buying here. Now, there's other reasons though that I average in as well. One of the big ones is I want the cash flow now. As soon as I buy my 3M shares today, they are eligible for dividends going forward and so I want my cash flow coming in and I want it now. I am in my late 30s and I've built up a pretty good size of cash flow from dividend stocks. And I'm not tapping into the dividends yet, but one, t one day, um, probably sooner than later, quite frankly, as a family, we may need to start tapping into the dividends. We have two young children. We live in the expensive Bay Area. I don't know if the time is just yet. We're trying to prolong tapping into the dividends as much as possible because I want to see this portfolio compound as much as possible. But I like, I like having that cash flow and I like having it now because it gives me options. Every night when I'm thinking, I'm thinking about personal finances. I'm thinking about the family budget. I know I have that wild card of dividends. I know I have it. It doesn't cover all of our living expenses yet. I have a long way to go for that, but it does cover a chunk of the living expenses if I want it to. And as you know out there, parents out there, you guys know that with young kids, there's a lot of expenses, a lot of new expenses. And so anyways, just having that option, having the cash flow now, I always like having that with dividend stocks. Now I'll tell you the other reason I'm buying, quite frankly, is I just gotta stay in the game. If I have cash sitting around, usually I just, it's just not in my nature to have cash sitting around. I like to stay in the game. I like to always be purchasing stock and it keeps me aligned with my goal of buying dividend stocks and having dividends cover all of my living expenses one day. I get there one brick at a time. And so that's why I always like dollar cost averaging in. So really good question. But at a high macro level, I do think that further corrections could be coming for the overall market and for 3M. I think this trade war stuff is really interesting. I actually love it. I think it um, it's all short term, by the way. And short term, I mean, for probably next five years or so could cause a lot of troubles, but long, long term, it'll all get sorted out. But in the next five years, it could create some great buying opportunities and world-class companies for dividend investors, long-term investors like myself. So that's question two. I want to get into question three. I love this question. This, in fact, is a question. This one came through on YouTube. This is a long question, but I want to read the whole thing. This was written very eloquently, and I want to really thank the subscriber who asked this. This was on, did come through on YouTube, so thank you. I hope you're watching. I really like this question. This was a, this is a, such a fundamental, interesting, complex question. You guys are going to love it. Anyways, in terms of full disclosure, my kids own Disney stock, ticker symbol DIS. I just did a video on that. I'll link in the description below. And here's a reaction to that video. Hey, Ian, after watching the Disney video and hearing about your kids owning stock, I have a question. I know you're a serious committed dividend investor wanting to live off dividends and not touching the principal or selling any stocks. After you live a long life collecting all those dividends, one day those stocks will be passed on to your children. It seems like dividend investing, living off dividends, never selling off stock is inextricably linked to having children to pass stocks on to. Very good question. I'm going to keep going though. For a single person or a couple with no children, this seems like an odd way to invest. My question is, do you think you would be a dividend investor living off dividends, never selling stock if you were single or had no children? Do you think you would take out 4% a year or more investor? Do you think you would be a take out 4% a year or more investor living off principal, selling stock as needed? and eventually drain as much of the account and living a great retirement if passing on stocks was not a consideration. Did having kids shape and cement your investing style? I don't think you've ever spoken about this in your videos and would appreciate your thoughts on it. Thanks and great content and as always. Wow. So anyways, this is, I love this question. I really love it. It just got me thinking. It's so complex. Anyways, um, lots of thoughts here. So, 
and I jotted some of them down, so I'm kind of checking over on the computer so I don't miss any of them. Thought number one, people are living a lot longer this, these days. And so I attend a lot of like economics um, conferences and summits. And one of the themes that some of the, one of the conferences that I attend, they talk about biotech and they talk about human longevity. There are literally solutions in the pipeline that will basically allow humans to live forever. And now I'm, I'm not exaggerating. There's stuff like that being worked on. Now, I don't know when it will come to fruition. Will it be for people of my generation or the generations of everyone watching? I don't know. But I do generally believe that humans are going to live a lot longer, a lot, lot longer. And so that's something to think about as a dividend investor who's in my late 30s, I may basically in the span of my life be really in the early innings. And so, and all of you, all of you folks out there might be. And so the advances in medical technology are happening and they're happening very quickly. And so when I think about that and I think about dividends, buy and hold forever, living off of dividends, that really coincides with my strategy because I don't know uh, what the lifespans will be. And so I get very concerned about traditional uh, ways of money management, this 4% rule, taking out money each year, living off of that. Because at a certain point, if the account gets depleted and um, you're not, you, you know, you deplete it too quickly, that will be very <laughs> unfortunate. It's not a good situation to be in for one's retirement. And so that's just something I think about at a high level. Now, another thing I think about at a high level is, look, I started investing in dividends when I was a teenager. Now, I'll tell you out there, um, actually, I don't even, I was like early, early teenager. So it, it's been a really long time. Anyways, oh, well, well over 20 years at this point. I was not thinking about having kids, but I just loved this strategy of dividends. But I will tell you, I've always thought, always in the back of my mind, thought about a legacy. And legacies come in many ways. And so I have many subscribers out there who have kids. I have many who um, may not have kids yet, but may in the future. I have other subscribers who maybe they don't want kids or they it's just not in the cards. They have different different aspirations in life. It's all good. But I would say in general, I believe that humans are here for a reason and that we're all here to add lasting value. One of the ways I try to add value, quite frankly, is through these YouTube videos. I share my knowledge here on YouTube for free and um, I do that because it's one way that I can give back and I love what I'm doing as well. And um, I do obviously earn a little bit of um, income from the advertisements as well, which is nice. And so what I'll say though, is I've always thought about this concept of legacy. And the person asking this question, I guess my question back would be, do you wanna have a legacy when um, the time has come, hopefully after a very long and prosperous life with all of these advances in medical technology, uh, maybe you're, you're even 200 years old. My question, is do you want to leave a legacy and what's great about dividends is you can pass on those dividends to a foundation you can char start your own charitable foundation you can pass on that money to a university you can pass it on to a homeless shelter you can pass it on to a food bank you can do all of the above if you have um you have uh, nephews or nieces you can pass on to them. And so there are many ways to leave a legacy in this world. And obviously children, I, I love my kids so much and it's, um, it's, it's such a blessing to have this opportunity to pass my dividend portfolio on to them. But I wanna even think when that happens, will I pass 100% of the dividend portfolio? It depends how big it gets, but at a certain point, I will probably consider carving part of it out for charitable contributions as well and have that be part of my legacy. And so throwing this question back to the person asking it and to everyone out there, when you're thinking about dividends, it's there, there are many ways of leaving your footprint, many ways of leaving your legacy here on planet Earth. And I think dividends really set people up for success. Now, a few more things with dividend stocks. One, I mentioned this earlier in today's video, I want 
cash flow and I want it now and I have cash flow, I'm really resisting the temptation to dip into it because the longer we can prolong dip, dipping into our cash flow to pay for living expenses, the more the snowball accumulates. But the beauty of dividends is I've always got that option and so whether I have kids or not, What's great about dividends is I believe it just gives investors options because if one invests in stocks that don't pay dividends, for example, that wild card, that cash flow factor, it's just not there. Surely someone could sell stock over time, but selling stock, especially when you're in earlier in your in your in your lifespan, it's just not a very interesting um, or exciting thing to do. It, it's quite frankly very. Um, frustrating to, to have to go out and sell stock, at least it would be for me. And so for me, having that cash flow, it's just really core to, to um, my persona as an investor. When I think about kids or when I don't think about kids, when I just think about life, and it's great because think about the stock market goes up, stock market goes down. No one wants to sell stocks when the stock market is going down. Unfortunately, far too many retail investors do that. But anyways, when the stock market goes down, I still have my dividends coming in and I can use them. I can pay for living expenses and I don't have to sell when stock prices are really low. But if I was not a dividend investor, I wouldn't have that option. So again, w whether I, one has kids, whether one doesn't have kids, I personally think dividend investing just offers so much more flexibility in that regard. And last, I'll tell you, I just like dividend stocks because some studies have shown that over the long run they have performed the best. Value stocks, dividend stocks have performed the best. And um, I actually did a study myself where I'm slightly beating the S&P 500 with my conservative dividend portfolio. I believe I'm doing it with a lot less risk. I'll link to that in the description below if you want to check it out. But what's, what's great about dividend stocks is I just think they will continue to do well over time, potentially beat the um, indices and the benchmarks and do that with a lot less risk. And I believe companies that are incentivized to pay dividends, they're more shareholder friendly, they're more cash friendly, they're thinking about the shareholders versus themselves. And I think that's really important. And so there are a lot of reasons I love investing for dividends. And I think all of them are applicable whether someone has kids or doesn't. Now, certainly if you have kids, I think it's cool that you have the opportunity also to pass on this machine of uh, that's producing all of these dividends. And certainly if it can compound multiple generations in someone's family, it can get really big. But again, even if you don't have kids, there's, there's other legacies that you can leave, such as even starting your own foundation and think about your foundation a few hundred years out, how many dividends will be generated and going towards doing good in our world. Anyways, long answer, but a long question too, so I wanted to do it uh, justice. I love that question. So question number four, if you know that the stock market is crashing, why don't you pull out and slowly buy back in? So I kind of touched on this earlier, but I want to talk about it again because there's a lot of talk in the YouTube community now, especially with this whole trade war, the tariffs that the crash is coming. And, and certainly I think the crash could be coming. I did a whole video on this. I'll link in the description below. It's coming. And I actually think the bigger issue than the trade war is the debt, the insurmountable debt. And oh my goodness, I was reading an economics newsletter the other day. This blew my mind that there are politicians. These are on the liberal side of things here. And I'm not gonna take sides. I don't wanna get into some political debate here on YouTube. But there are some politicians on the liberal side that want to amend like the, the legislation that governs the Federal Reserve Bank. And they want to amend it in a way where the Federal Reserve can basically print money that can be used for social programs. And they can do this in a way where the, 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 the money that's printed or the money that is lent out has zero interest and it never has to be paid back. I'm not doing it justice here. I read this a few days ago. Um, but in general, I see trends towards more debt, more money, all of that kind of stuff. That concerns me more than trade war. Anyways, there's a lot of talk about the crash. I think the crash will come. I love a crash. I look forward to a crash because I can average down. And when I buy my stocks low, I get a higher starting yield, gets me to financial freedom quicker. Anyways, the subscriber asked me if I think that's coming. Why don't I just sell, buy it back? I can't time the market and I'll tell you these reversals, it can be it can be very quick. It can like go down, right back up. And so it's really hard to time the reversal. And quite frankly, I don't wanna sell because I have a lot of built-in gains and so I don't wanna trigger capital gains on the built-in gains that I already have in my portfolio. Also my portfolio, I built it brick by brick. 
So I have so many purchase prices, it would just be a lot of work to do that. I, at the, the scale I'm at with the 40 stocks that I have, I am not nimble enough to be able to do something like that, quite frankly, to pull it off. If I did, I mean, I could, but it would just take up way too much mind share, way too much time. So for me, what I've always found works better is I just like to average in over time. It just has always worked better for me. And again, if I sell now, I lose my stream of dividends and I'm not using them to pay bills, but I could, I could, <laughs> I, I need to have that option uh, with our huge amount of living expenses that we do have. And so anyways, another fabulous question, but I'll tell you, my way is not the only way. I've talked about this before, but I want to let you know some people, maybe they're better at timing the market. Maybe it works for them. So be it. Uh, more power to them. I, I wish them the best. And I know there's many strategies out there that work. This is the strategy that I use that has worked the best for me. And I've tried a lot of strategies and this is the one that works for me. Anyways, I want to get into another one. This one is from my good buddy, Brian. Brian, thank you, by the way. He's been here since the early days, him and his wife. And, um, they invest together. I, I love you guys. You asked this, this wasn't really a question, it's more of a comment. And this one I think came through on Twitter as well. So check me out if you haven't found me on Twitter. Did you see uh, Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT? By the, by the way, in terms of full disclosure, I'm long Caterpillar, ticker symbol CAT. I own this one in my stock portfolio. And it said, did you see CAT is looking at raising their dividend by 20%? Yep, they just did that. Couldn't believe it. Love it. Uh, just saw this. Makes me think it might be time to become a holder of the company. So. I actually own a uh, Caterpillar stock, ticker symbol CAT, and I want to talk about my experience with this stock. I, um, so this wasn't really a question, but I thought it was a good time to bring it up. So anyways, um, it's now at $125 a share, and I bought it originally in 2013, and I bought it at $86 a share, 86 and 17 cents. So my initial tranche, my initial purchase price, I'm up 45%. And um, my yield on cost is a 4.8%. So if I take the current dividend yield, divide by my purchase price, 4.8%. Not bad, not great, it's okay. But here's where it gets exciting. When we had this kind of like oil crisis a few years ago, this is when um, OPEC was flooding the, the market with oil and um, driving prices down. Prices since recovered more or less, but back then, I did a whole videos on this by the way, I'll link in the description below to some videos I did on oil. Caterpillar tanked. Why? They sell a lot of equipment to the oil industry. If oil prices are low, less people are extracting oil from the earth because they um, are not as profitable. Caterpillar tanked. Some of my oil stocks tanked. Took the opportunity to make a calculated investment, calculated risk, bought them up, did really well. And so what happened in 2015 when I bought Caterpillar, I was able to average down at $65.14 per share. And so based on that purchase price, my ladder tranche averaging down, which I love doing, I have conviction in the company, dropped from 86 down to 65, so be it, I'll buy more. I'm up 92% on that tranche. And my yield on cost on that tranche is 6.3%. And so that is um, one example right now of averaging down. And look, Caterpillar, it's back up at 125. I didn't know it would reverse back up so quickly. I didn't know this oil thing would resolve so quickly. And this goes back to the last question. Why don't I sell and buy back? It's really hard to time this stuff. But what is easy is when I see something tanking, and I believe the fundamentals are still there, and I think the price of oil is going to recover, I'll just buy more. And I did the same with some of my other oil, uh, oil, pure play oil super majors at that time as well. Now, what I'll tell you about Caterpillar is I'm not buying more here. I am uh, reinvesting dividends for sure. I love it. I love that they raise the dividend. But the thing I found about Caterpillar is it's a really cyclical beast meaning the highs are high, the lows are low. And so I, if I think a global recession is coming. And I already see signs of that with an industrial like 3M. And I already see things kind of happening out there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for this thing to tank. And I think it could because it's, it's, um, it, it has much more volatility, I would say, than some of the other holdings, the steady eddy holdings I have, like 3M, for example. And so what I like to do with Caterpillar is wait for those bargain basement sales. And I was able to get one of those in 2015. When I first purchased, it wasn't on sale, but I was just kind of starting my position in Caterpillar. Now, Caterpillar for me will never be a core stock. It's always going to be kind of like a smaller kind of holding, but I love it. I'm proud of it. I love that they're growing the dividend, and I like to diversify. This is why I own 40 stocks, so I have something that's kind of volatile in there, but I'm getting a good yield on cost on it. I'm willing to stomach some of that volatility, and I think that um, it will continue to do well in the long term. I think 
uh, building and infrastructure will only continue. Now, what scares me a little with Caterpillar, in the short run at least, with tariffs is and with just some of this animosity that's happening at a political level between uh, the U.S. and other countries is, um, look, Caterpillar is a U.S. company, and some of these other countries, they, they can choose, like, hey, we don't want to buy your Caterpillar equipment, and we don't want to do this when you're threatening us with these tariffs. And so, again, I don't want to get political here, say one way is the right way, one way is the not. I'm no tariff expert. I'm no political expert. What, but what I do know is that in the short term, term some of this drama can lead to buying opportunities. So maybe we will see some downside in Caterpillar, but if they're confident enough to raise their dividend by 20%, I think their visibility on the future is pretty darn bright. And so those are my five questions for today. Dividend investing, this is dividend investing for everyone. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you. We are 25,000 dividend investors strong. Thank you for the support. I am so excited about the future of this YouTube channel, Thug Life. In terms of full disclosure, I already disclosed the stocks throughout the video that I personally own, but just go back, you'll see the ones I own. I also put always in the description the stocks that I own that I mention. And in terms of a disclaimer, Today's video is not investment advice. I'm not a licensed investment advisor. Today's video is just for your fun and entertainment. If you're gonna go out and invest in the stock market or anywhere else, please consult a licensed financial advisor first. Literally, I'm just sharing my journey here on YouTube for fun and entertainment. Now, if you wanna support my channel, I would be forever grateful if you could subscribe and hit that little notification bell. And if you're already subscribed, please hit that little notification bell. That way you'll be alerted when my new videos come out right away. And that is the best way that you can thank me here for producing this content on YouTube and sharing my best content with everyone in the community here on YouTube. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next Dividend Investing video.